Hey guys, welcome back to another Heartman Controls Protector.net tutorial. Today we're going to be showing you how to add and configure access privilege groups. Access privilege groups are sets of rules that decide which doors or elevator floors a user is allowed access to when they present a credential, along with when they can access these doors or floors. It's generally recommended you create these after you've added all your doors and elevators, but before you add any users. To start, we'll navigate on the home page to the day-to-day -day section on the top and select Access Privilege Groups. In Protector.net, a cardholder, which we call users, can be a member of one or more groups. This gives us lots of flexibility in the way that you can structure these groups. There are two main styles you can configure your access groups. The first is more traditional and is not recommended for larger systems. In this method, you design your access groups on the type of user you'll be placing into that group. You may have a few groups such as production staff, security staff, office staff, IT staff. Each user will belong to a single group that will decide which doors or floors they are allowed access to. Where this method runs into problems is a lack of flexibility. For example, I have a uh, chat, a uh, production manager that needs access to the data center. If I try to place him in the IT group, I'll get a conflict because there are common doors between the IT staff group and the production staff group. At this point, my options are to add the data center doors to the production group or give Chad his own group. Either option is a recipe for a system that is difficult to manage, especially if whoever is managing the system changes over time. The second method, and recommended method, is to base your access groups on the doors that will be in that group. You may have a few groups, such as exterior doors always access, exterior doors 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., IT doors, production doors, etc. Each user will belong to one or more groups based on which doors they should have access to. This method is more flexible, more precise, requires more overhead initially, but can save hours of time and frustration as opposed to the other group structures. Let's delete the old rules and build our new rules based on the second example. To start, we'll add a new group by clicking the Add button on the Access Privilege Groups page. We'll name this one Exterior Doors Always Access. Select a partition. If you want the user schedules in this group to be different on a holiday, select a holiday group. We can select which users will be placed in this group while making it, or we can do it after. We'll select which readers we want in this group. Once the readers are selected, we can use the drop-down menu to the right to select a user time zone that would define when any users in this group are allowed through these doors. Scroll down to the bottom and click Create. I'll quickly repeat this process with a couple more groups. We'll create a production doors always access and IT doors always access. Now that we have our access groups, we can quickly take a look at chat as our example again. As you can see, the way we structured our groups now, we can be very precise as to what chat gets access to. So we'll give chat access to those IT doors, the exterior doors, and the production doors. That concludes this tutorial. For more information about access privilege groups, please see the applicable chapter in the software guide.